do I advance with this? Yes. Okay. Hi, good morning, everybody. So um, we have no financial disclosures or conflicts of interest. Um, so superior mesenteric artery syndrome is a um, rare syndrome. It's defined as compression of the third portion of the duodenum between the SMA and the aorta. It was um, first described in 1861 as an autopsy finding, um, and shortly thereafter was just described in an immobile patient in a full body cast, thus um, leading to the eponym cast syndrome. It's a rare cause of abdominal pain and is most commonly seen after a pathologic amount of weight loss. Um, the normal angle between the aorta and the SMA is greater than 25 degrees, and um, an angle of less than 20 degrees can cause intermittent obstruction of the third portion of the duodenum. Um, it is a very rare syndrome with an incidence of less than 1%. It's more commonly described in women. Nutritional optim uh, optimization to increase that mesenteric fat pad between the SMA and the aorta is the first step in treating SMA syndrome. Um, at our institution, uh, we first um, institute treatment with oral supplementation, then with feeding tubes, and then we escalate to TPN. Failure of medical management has traditionally been an indication for surgical intervention. The most common, um, the most common um, surgical therapy for SMA syndrome is um, laparoscopic duodenogestinostomy. And prior smaller case reports have described symptomatic relief in the immediate postoperative period, including in our own previously reported um, case series of uh, 14 patients. However, a longer term follow up is lacking. And so we report now um, kind of the largest series of patients undergoing minimally invasive um, DJ for SMA syndrome, as well as our um, follow up um, at um, six months or greater. And so um, we underwent an IRB approved retrospective chart review. It's performed on all patients at our institution um, with SMA syndrome who underwent um, laparoscopic DJ from this time period. Um, data collected included patient demographics, clinical presentation, and operative data, and outcomes such as perioperative and postoperative morbidity. Um, all of our patients underwent preoperative evaluation for their SMA syndrome, including imaging studies. Um, for example, this is a upper GI on a patient that shows a dilated um, first and second portion of the duodenum. Um, and um, cut off of the contrast, um, presumably from obstruction um, by the SMA. Um, after confirmation of diagnosis, our group performs a minimally invasive side-to-side -side loop duodenogegenostomy. Um, we use the 60 millimeter linear stapler advanced to 40 millimeters, and the resulting common enterotomy is closed with a running absorbable suture. Um, there was 26 patients um, in our cohort, 18 of which had greater than six months follow-up. Um, of these, 14 were women, and the mean age at time of surgery was 31.1. Um, 16 of our patients um, had um, other comorbid conditions, the most common of which was psychiatric disease, present in 11 patients. 10 patients had prior abdominal procedures, 4 had GERD, 3 had chronic constipation, and 2 had a preoperative diagnosis of chronic abdominal pain. All of our patients presented with abdominal pain, and the majority also had nausea and vomiting as well. Um, 10 of 18 patients um, reported weight loss secondary to their ascendant with a, a mean weight loss of 14 kilograms. The duration of symptoms prior to diagnosis um, ranged from anywhere from 1 to 51 months, with an average of 15 months. Three of our patients were on TPN preoperatively, and the mean preoperative BMI was 19.7. Um, the diagnosis of, of SMA syndrome was made by clinical presentation, elimination of other diagnoses, and by radiographic confirmation at our institution. Um, eight of our patients had an abnormal CT scan, um, four of our patients had an abnormal upper GI study, and six patients had both an abnormal CT or an upper GI study. Um, our mean operative time was 144 minutes, EBL was 21. Um, and three of our 18 patients underwent a robotic-assisted lab DJ. Um, let's see. So um, our, our, um, of our 18 patients available for intermediate follow-up, defined as um, six months or greater, um, our mean follow-up was 27.7 months, with a median of 26 months. Um, we had three patients that were readmitted within 30 days, two who were readmitted with um, dehydration and were treated successfully med uh, medically. 
One patient was readmitted with um, closed lube obstruction and underwent laparoscopic um, lysis of adhesions. Um, postoperatively, patients gained an average of 2.2 kilograms um, with an increase in BMI from 19.6 to 20.4. So initially, 14 of our 18 patients reported some amount of symptomatic relief, um, but at uh, Lita's follow-up, unfortunately, only three patients uh, reported symptomatic improvement and three patients reported symptomatic um, resolution. Um, three patients were subsequently um, diagnosed with global intestinal dysmotility. One patient actually underwent intestinal transplantation. Um, one is on the intestinal transplantation list. Um, two other patients were diagnosed with gastroparesis, one which was treated with pyloroplasty, um, and the other who was being treated um, medically. And the remaining seven patients remained severely symptomatic at um, latest follow-up. Um, five of these patients still require nutritional supplementation, either with TPN or with tube feedings, due to um, poor PO intake um, due to their symptoms. And um, our symptomatic patients undergo um, a pretty extensive work, I'm including both endoscopy and imaging studies, um, both of which have revealed um, patent anastomosis as well as uh, normal transit time through the DJ. And so uh, none of the patients in our series um, have suffered from any symptoms of blind loose syndrome like new wants of bloating, diarrhea, greasy or floating stools, um, and there are no mortalities in our series. And so um, the most common and most successful surgical procedure in the literature for SMA syndrome is um, duodenal jejunostomy. Um, however, most case series in the literature report only short-term outcomes for small numbers of patients. And um, in our largest single institution study of patients, we find that the majority had um, some symptomatic improvement immediately following surgery. Um, however, only 33% of patients at um, intermediate follow-up reported symptomatic improvement or resolution, in contrast to our previously reported study with a shorter-term follow-up. Um, and of the patients with, uh, without improvement, um, three went on to have a new diagnosis of global dysmotility after their operation, and two were diagnosed with gastroparesis. Um, given that intestinal dysmotility and gastroparesis are both functional disorders, whereas SMA syndrome um, is classically described as a structural disease, um, after the diagnosis of SMA syndrome is established in our patients, they typically do not undergo anything like a smart pulse study or a gastric emptying study. Um, however, given the overlapping vague symptomatology associated with um, these diseases, including postprandial abdominal pain and weight loss, it may be a consideration in the future in the workup um, of this type of abdominal pain, especially prior to surgical intervention. And so in conclusion, SMA syndrome is an exclusion is a diagnosis of exclusion with sometimes vague constellation of symptoms. Um, diagnosis is typically confirmed with radiographic findings, which were well documented in our cohort. Um, however, we were disappointed to find that um, initial symptomatic relief did not appear durable at intermediate follow-up, leading us to speculate whether the finding of obstruction at the third portion of the duodenum is um, secondary to other pathologies rather than a single disease process in and of itself. Um, given the small number of patients with relief of symptoms after um, surgery in um, our series, it is difficult for us to predict or conclude um, which patients may respond to um, laparoscopic duty and jejunostomy. Um, but we can um, conclude that there are minimal perioperative and intermediate complications associated with the procedure. However, given um, the unknown long-term symptomatic relief following surgery, better prospective studies are needed to elucidate the best and most durable treatment um, in SMA syndrome.